Four ways in order to get this rolling. What I mean by this, I'm talking about your direct mail marketing. And there's four methods to the madness. One of which is list directory. And in my opinion, and I've been using this list directory service probably for the last, I mean, I've been talking about this service for six, seven years now. And that service is called SRDS. SRDS. Let me show you what it looks like. <clears throat> That's not my fault. <laughs> you see, you see, it's like a thing. Standard rate and data service. Just do a search for SRDS. You'll come up with SRDS Media, Standard Rate and Data Service. What SRDS is, it's a directory of all the list brokers in the United States. Now, why is that important? Because you can contact these list brokers, their telephone number and contact information is in the directory. It's sort of like a Yellow Pages for list brokers. And you can search based on keywords such as absentee owners, pre-foreclosure, distressed properties list, bankruptcy list, divorce list, code enforcement violation list, and so on. Based on the results, you'll contact the actual list brokers and find out how deep and how targeted and how hot. That's a key word. What phone is that? No. <laughs> 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 I didn't mean to call you. I didn't mean to call you. I'm sorry. 24 shirts. You know, yeah. normally, with, normally with somebody else, I would have them sing, I'm a little teapot. Oh, <laughs> 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 but says it's you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wait, 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 wait. Go ahead, do that. Okay. <laughs> Let's get back to where we were. <laughs> SRDS is, in my opinion, the leading source for list directories. Why? Because there's, a, there's hundreds of thousands of directories here. Now, this is what you call on the advanced level. Because these directories, or this directory, will allow you to drill down based on keywords, as we mentioned. The further you drill down, meaning one level, two level, three level, four levels, and so on, the more the list will cost you. So you have to weigh, do I go after highly targeted? Do I situate or put my, my business in the middle? Or do I just go by a saturation based on your budget? I'm going to be the first one to tell you, the more targeted you go, the higher or the larger amount of deals you'll be able to do. Why? Because like we described earlier, you're putting your business right in front of that person who absolutely positively need your service because you drill down two, three, four, five levels deep. But it's a budget issue. You have to decide, do I go to this service and get it through them? Because you can still drill down three, four, five levels deep and not go through here. The cost of this, $477 per quarter or $899 a year. Now, but that's not it. All you just did was pay for the luxury of getting a list of brokers to call. You still have to buy the list. So you pay for the yellow pages of list brokers. But once you talk to the list brokers, they're going to quote your price on that list how much it will cost you. So it's not just buying this service, you still have to buy the list. This just opens the amount of list you're able to go after. 
where very few people know about. It. This helps you to swim in a pond, or should I say fish in a pond, where there's thousands of fishes. I said fishes. <laughs> where there's thousands of fish, but you're the only one there. That is what you'll get with SRDS, but it's expensive. So what does it cost once you determine the type of list you want on average? Well, it, it's not an average because each list broker has a different cost associated to you. I gave an example of a list that we broke. We broke. The list that we purchased, what I mentioned, absentee owners, um, um, high equity, certain zip code, credit rating, that list cost us for 1,100 names, it cost us $475. And I'm going to show you how those names go. But you know what? I'll pay $475 every day if I'm going to make $73,000. Right. Uh, uh, I know that's right. Hypothetically, then, yeah. you know, you can join, you can join with somebody, and you guys can work together and do all that. Exactly. I mean, so the income, I mean, the price would be just good. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. So, so you're saying, so you go to SRDS, and it'll just give you a list of broadcasts, like a list of data. Yes. Which is a whole lot better, because Melissa Data uses these people to convert business. Most of the companies out there use a service called CoreLogic as the engine for their services. Not to mention, Melissa Data is it specifically known for good lists for real estate investors. Yeah. Melissa Data, I would put on the on the level of C. If you say A, B, C, uh, well, that would be a C for real estate investors. What would be A? A would be SRDS. A would be um, yeah SRDS. B would be list a list broker, such as Kern Collingwood and some of the samples I'm going to give you. Any other questions? What, what grade would you get list source? List source would be a B to B minus. Why? They use RealQuest. RealQuest is the engine for their actual list, which is oversaturated. Um, I've been told, I don't know how many people who are using, I, I, I started telling people about list source about six years ago. And within that six year period, Everybody started talking about list source. Now, every guru out there tells people to use list source. The only thing about list source is their data source is RealQuest. RealQuest is a good data source, except the up, the up, the update time and the um, what they call livability of hot and cold lists is very low. Meaning, I want a service that is constantly updating their data, where they're actually scrubbing the information. One of the biggest complaints I hear when people talk about this source is that they're getting repeated addresses and or undeliverable addresses. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. Which tells me it's not being scrubbed through case system which is a big must. You want all of your lists scrubbed before you get it because case system lets you know whether or not that same person still lives in the property. So you're not wasting your time sending letters to somebody that don't live there. Now, another good part about SRDS is the fact that you can rent a list as opposed to buy it. So you don't have to, and it'd be at a lesser cost. To rent the list, you get to use it two, three, four times. How do they know that you're using it more than two, three, four times? Because they got dummy addresses on there that go to them. That when your mail season comes, they know you've seen it three or four more times. And actually, how I know. <laughs> I'm going to push the envelope, I'm telling you. As long as pinstripes ain't involved, I'm going to push the envelope. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> that's what you have to worry about when you're renting a list. You don't want to go beyond the amount of times that you're renting the list for. 
Keep that in mind when you're buying lists from a list broker. You can actually rent that list as well. Another example. I mean, you're talking about lists that you can get where the person has a house that has high equity and their second mortgage is going into foreclosure. If you're looking to buy notes. I could get a list of people that, and this is what's called a house list. A house list is a list that someone provides that's like a company or organization. For example, Coffin Sheets has a house list. All the people that have purchased this product. So all the gurus will go to Coffin Sheets hot list and start mailing people to try to get them to buy their product. That's called a house list. Um, so you could get all kinds of stuff on this service here. Tax list. Oh, that's easy. That's easy. Yes. 100% yes. But there's a lot of companies that give you tax lists as well. <clears throat> Not just SRDS. And we're going to go over a couple of them as well. Any other questions? Jerome, I had a question here, buddy? No, I'm good. You know, I'm going to call you to find out exactly how to use this. I mean, I'm looking at the website, and it's, I'm already lost I'm just looking at this thing. That's okay. No problem at all. You're a math master, right? Yep. 24-7, you got my, my telephone number. Okay. You guys proof SRDS. If this isn't your budget, then you want to go with a list broker. Listability. It's called list stability. Listability is a list broker, which means SRDS is a excuse me is a directory of brokers. Listability is a broker that has a defined amount of brokers in their category. So, in other words. Listability will have five or ten people that can provide you real estate investor stuff, where SRDS will have 500 people that can provide you real estate investor lists. Yes. Now, with listability, you can create a model. What is a model? I described it earlier. Absentee owners, zip code, high equity, credit ratings, below 600, 30, 60, 90 days late on their mortgage. And you can get that list from listability. And they're going to charge you based on the amount or levels you go deep. Here's an example. This is a foreclosure database from this ability. It consists of foreclosure mailing lists that will allow you to reach people that are in foreclosure. It gives you access to homeowners who are defaulted on their mortgage. The file is divided into two subsets. Those who have received a notice of default and those who, uh, who, who have a court order default. Now, very important key point here. In the universe, this is list terminology. A universe is how many people are in this particular list. This universe has 2,500,999 households. That's how many people are in this list. You can pull at a cost per 1,000. M means per 1,000. 10,000 for every 1,000 is $160. So if you're doing five zip codes, and as long as it falls under 10,174, or comes to 10,174, it would only cost you $160 per thousand, 
which means 10 times that number per thousand. $160 per thousand. So conceivably, if, <clears throat> if I'm interested in uh, zip code, 21224, mm -hmm. and you're interested in zip code um, 21218 or something, and the combined number is 10,000. Could I ask for that and we split the cost? Of course you could. Absolutely. The only cat thing is that we don't know how many of them I may end up still getting more in mind. That would say that would still work. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now the geography is United States, and you can segment down. One thing I want to make sure I let everybody know, because I didn't mention this earlier, <coughs> but you cannot go after people in foreclosure in Maryland. We're doing this in DC, we're doing this in Ohio, we're doing this in Florida. You cannot directly go after people that's in foreclosure knowingly. In Maryland, it's called the Protection of Home and Foreclosure Act, PIFA. PIFA law states that if a person is over 60 days late on their mortgage, you as an investor cannot buy that property directly from them. You must buy it by way of an intermediary. That intermediary must be a real, licensed real estate agent, broker, or an attorney. So what it says is, once you find out that a property is over 60 days late on their mortgage, or a property owner is over 60 days late on their mortgage, you have to say, well, I'm sorry, I can't buy this property right now unless you get represented by an agent or an attorney. And then I can buy it from you. PIFA law only applies to owner occupants. If it's an absentee property, it does not apply, which means you can buy them all day long. So what list will you buy? Absentee. There you go. Because it doesn't apply to the PIFA law. Another list, same foreclosure, different list broker. Direct mail is the lead source. DML can help you locate the stress, residential, and commercial properties in all stages of foreclosure. The universe is 11 million. The amount that is pre-foreclosure, meaning within the past six months, no progression, this could be bankruptcy. 242,000 per 1,000, and $145 per 1,000. Pending auction. Per 1,000, two months, $145. And REO estate owned in the past six months, $264,759. When we're talking about the lingo, the main, firm, the main terms you want to look at is house list, hot list, M, universe, those are really the main terminology you want to be concerned with. A hot list means a, hot, a list that is frequently updated. <clears throat> They'll normally tell you how frequent it's updated. That's why I like list brokers as opposed to companies like list source. <clears throat> because of the frequency rate in which the information is updated. Absentee <laughs> owner file. This broker. 19 million is the universe. $25 per 1,000. Now, the question is, this is a comprehensive database containing information on accidental, um, absentee residential property owners across the US. <coughs> if you want additional mortgage information, I cost you another twenty-five dollars per one thousand. What additional mortgage information? First and junior mortgages, balloon loans, known to value, meaning zero equity, mortgage amount, <laughs> created line loan, equity loan, origination lender, assigned lender, loan rate type, matured mortgage, maturity date, 
mortgage assignment date, mortgage terms. You can get all that information for additional $25 per $1,000 that you want it for. Now, you're talking about doing things or creating deals where there are no deals. When you're dealing with first and second mortgages, where there are people who, and we do mailing lists to people who have no equity all day long. Property that we got off of Monroe Street. Good block, no borders. Monroe Street, that's considered the Grand Wizard Hotel. When you have no board ups in a block. But good block of Monroe, from the mailing, the person had a property, the, the absentee owner, she owned the barber shop, which was right underground, which was right below the actual property because it had a basement. And they had fixed the property up, but they weren't able to rent it. So we contacted them. And we told them, remember, you got to have different exit strategies. The exit strategy we used to contact them was tenant placement. Property hadn't been rented in over a year. Property's in great condition. They finally put the money in it to rent it, and they did not want to be landlords anymore. So what they did was we structured them to do what we call our guarantee rent program. Our guarantee rent program allow us to pay you a fixed dollar amount each and every month regardless if your property is vacant or empty. You don't have to worry about property management. You don't have to worry about repairs. You don't have to worry about vacancies. You don't have to worry about anything. We'll pay you a flat fee for your property for two years. They jumped on it. Now, why would we pay them a flat fee of $800 a month on a property that's in moving condition? Because we are great and we are and we just want to give back. <laughs> I want to create a win-win situation. I'm going to give you a rope, but I'm not going to drown with you. When you're working with sellers, you let them know this has to be a win-win. I will give you a rope to help you swim, but I'm not going to drown with you. They did not want to be landlords anymore. You don't have to be a landlord. We'll pay you $800 a month each month so that you can keep this property and we'll keep the property in what we call forced appreciation. What's forced appreciation? Forced appreciation is finding higher and better use for an existing residence and creating cash flow from that use. So what do we did? From $800, we turned it into $2,200 a month. We rented four rooms. Out of the four rooms, we gave the person $800 a month. We kept the, distance, the difference of $1,400 a month. Our annual uh, money for the electric and gas is about $265 a month. We're walking away with about $800 positive cash flow every month. And we didn't put anything into the property other than forced appreciation, finding the highest and best use from a property. Danny. Danny's been working on a deal. We've been working on a deal. How long now, Danny? About six months. About six months. You're talking about creative. And this is going to go into one of the questions about finding deals and how you can treat exit strategies. Six months he was working on this deal. Now, when you say working on it, having a conversation with the seller, reaching back out, trying to do this, are you ready now? No, okay, no problem, we'll contact you. Okay, no problem, no problem. Okay, we'll contact you. And then finally, yeah, I'm ready, let's do this, let's make it happen. Tell them the deal. Condo like apartment in uh, Glen Burnie. Uh, at first, uh, he moved to Texas and didn't pay his mortgage. And this was a divorced person, right? Yes. Okay, go ahead. And I was just trying to get him going again, get his credit back up and, and whatnot, and mm -hmm. just to, to get his life a little bit better. And he said he has a uh, the Glen Burnie condo, and he owes uh, 150 thousand on it, and the mortgage was about uh, 1,200. And I figure I can do something with it, rent it out for 15, and get cash flow for about 300 dollars or so yeah. per month. Now stop there. How many months behind was he in his payments? 
Almost a year. A year behind on the payment issue, going to go into foreclosure, digging his credit. Was he concerned about keeping his credit? No. When you hear those words, all I want is somebody to take this property off my hands. All I want is just to get this, this headache. People will trade equity for peace of mind all day long. Mm -hmm. Now you have to think, well, how can I make a deal out of a property that's worth how much? 150. That he owes how much? About 150. <laughs> so how do I make a deal out of a property that's worth 150 that he owes 150 where the actual property hasn't been paid in a year and there's a threat of foreclosure? What he did was a what? Uh, <laughs> lease option. With a loan modification. Yeah. Now, loan modification, meaning restructuring a loan or, de or delivering a loan in a new present form. Meaning, the original loan amount is 150. Now that the property is going for a loan modification in three months, what would the loan amount be? $75,000. So, <laughs> the mortgage company dropped $75,000 off of the loan so that he do a modification. What? And now he has a property that's worth one fifty dollars that he's going to get for $75,000. Isn't that a short sale? Modification. You can get a modification where the actual lender will delete money off of the actual loan. Is that a permanent deletion? Yes. Yeah. Now, when you got a deletion like that, there's a deficiency judgment. Right. Meaning that there's money that's owed because taxable income of 75000 was forgiven from the deal. But the dollar amount on that taxable income is how much? Ten grand. Ten grand. Eighty-five thousand. So, will I pay ten grand for $65,000 in equity? Yes. Hell yeah! Yes. <laughs> Now, now, not only that, but he discovered a program. He discovered a program that could cut that ten grand to how much? Six. Wow. Six grand. Wow. Wow. And now he's going to put. He's going to put a tenant in there for a lease for for rent for rent. Correct. Yes. At how much? Fifteen hundred. And the mortgage payment is going to be once he gets seventy five. How much? Five hundred. Wow. Five hundred. His positive cash flow is going to be $800 a month. And in two years, you're talking about creativity, guys, here. But when we worked through this deal, we was like, man, it's, it's got to be. I mean, it's like, you, you hear the best part of it is this. This is the best part of it. In two years, he's going to buy the property, and he's going to put another renter in the property, or keep the current renter in there, and he's going to refinance. Because he has $75,000 of equity in there right now at $150,000. Which means his refinance loan will be how much? A hundred, you said a hundred and what? Which means he can walk away with $75,000 in his pocket and have the tenor pay for it. Wow. That's beautiful. That's creative financing. That's thinking outside of the box. That's making deals where other people will walk away and say, right. Hey, that. It's not a wholesale deal. It's not a rehab flip. I have a lot of people told me to walk away the deal. And who, and who told you to keep it? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so the question is, is he, he's doing the lease purchase? He's going like to, he's, yes. Okay. And he's got the right to lease it, to sublease it. <clears throat> okay. With a renter. And he's going to actually buy it in two years. And he can do buy it as soon as he wants. But he wants to use the revenue that he's going to collect right now and do a delayed settlement in two years. So no money coming out of his pocket. Correct. No. So he's actually working with the lender? He, the, the, the owner worked with work the, the lender. lender. Right. He put the lender and the process in place. This is where you have to think about, you need to be what they call a, a tactical engineer. You have to be a technical engineer in these process. The deal doesn't just leave or do itself once you put it under contract. You have to know how to work with people and motivate them to create action. And that's what he did. So the because I'm, I'm a little confused. It's almost like a short sale, except that there's a delayed purchase. It's a modification. It's a modification. It's a long modification. So the bank has to approve all of this. Yeah, the bank already approved it. Mm -hmm. He was already pre-approved. Mm -hmm. 
He was pre approved for the modification? Correct. Because he still wanted to get rid of it even though he was pre approved for it. Yep. Remember, equity for peace of mind. It's probably a divorce. Equi it is a divorce, as we said earlier. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Equity oh, for peace of mind. Yeah. 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 Now, he probably got that letter. Did she say yes? <laughs> 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 But this case, he was precluded from application. What if he wasn't? And have you started the process? How long does it take? Each lender has a different time frame to approve or not approve a modification. And why would they do that? Why would what? The lender? Yeah. Because they didn't get paid for a year. It was a year since they received the last payment. And he, the lender was convinced that a modification would stop that process of non payment. What if, why, why wouldn't they just propose and yeah. get more, maybe get hundreds? You, you, you're thinking in terms of of what a sane person would do. Yeah. Lenders aren't people, they're corporations. Yeah. Corporation thinks in terms of million um, dollars worth of portfolio in the process and not one house. Right. But how long does it take typically on average? Well, we just talked about that deal took six months to get. Six months. Six so months. For the loan month. It depends on the lender. Yeah, right. Each average. Lender, average. I would say on average months. you're looking between three to, three to five months. Yeah. Three to five months. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Why would um oh wow Dan why would you want to do a lease option and hold the property at the end and take cash out when you refi it versus selling it and taking the cash in? Generational wealth. He wants to keep the property in his portfolio, pay off the mortgage, and have a free and clear property. Once you sell it, you lose every asset of that property. Oh, 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 let, oh, he just, he just reminded me. <laughs> what was the original interest rate on the loan? Five. What, now, the bank dropped the interest rate to what now? Two percent. Wow. <laughs> now, you just made a very good point. You know that this bank is doing that. Right. Could you not buy a list of all loans that's in foreclosure with wow. this bank? Wow. Oh. 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 And what's the name of the bank that had that loan? <laughs> <laughs> that's all I have if he wants to share that. Cause I'll share it out. Okay. So originally the user was on Countrywide, and Bank of America bought over yeah. Countrywide, yeah. and they had a like a legal issue between yeah. Countrywide yeah. and yeah. Bank of America. So to sell out of a court. Bank of America did this program. So. And how do you find, I mean, can you just go to the website and find this program, or is there a certain specific name you got to have? It's a loan modification. modification. That's the name loan of the program. Mm -hmm. Now, like I said, not all banks will do it. Right. It depends on the circumstance, mm -hmm. but closed mouths don't get fed. <laughs> and the tax thing was the federal, it's a federal <clears throat> modification, or federal program. Right. And we noticed that when we looked at the actual documents. He sent me over the documents, and we read through the documents, and the documents said that there's a program that you can go through in order to get the actual um, the delinquency judgment discounted if you go through this program. And that's how we decided to take it through the program. The HAMPA program? I don't know what it's called yet. I'm still, like, you know, working with that. So in this example, the owner was pre-approved for that, right? The notification. But if you weren't, and you don't know if they would allow that, then how would you know if you should proceed with the deal? Because you act the loan to go and file for modification. If the loan, if the, if, the, if, the, if, the, if they say no, then so you know you wouldn't buy, you wouldn't buy, you wouldn't do anything until you you know that. Exactly. At that point, it would back out. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that goes into contingencies. Right. One contingency. This, this contract is subject to loan modification approval at a desired profit, at a desired cost and interest rate. And why would the owner take the, the modified loan though? Is it they still couldn't pay it? He couldn't pay it. He's, he's out of state. He's not in so, state. So remember, this is an absentee owner. This was an investment property. This wasn't a property he was living in. One of the things I want to Get you guys to understand is 
Stop trying to make logic out of every situation. Yeah. Don't think for something. Because people will talk, talk themselves out of a deal. Well, an owner ain't going to let me take over their payment, so I'm not going to ask them. Yeah. Well, an owner ain't going to let me do this, so I, that would be crazy if they did this. Right. It's crazy for you not thinking of asking them to do it. Every person, here's another uh, uh, what I can call a piece of wisdom. Every offer or every deal you talk to, you better leave that person with an offer, whether you buy it or not. Regardless if it's a bad deal or not, let them know how much you'd be willing to pay. Why? Because when it gets cold and they start needing money and they need this and they need that and they have to jump back down to reality, your offer is going to be in their mind. I did have an investor that wanted to pay me 18000 Instead of, no, this isn't a good deal for us, buy. Leave them with an offer that makes sense, that make that a good deal. And then when they call you back, whoop, that was my offer five months ago. I just made it over the top of my head, man. You got that on camera, right? Okay, yeah. This offer is contingent, uh, contingent upon a loan modification at the price and interest rate of my approval. Or the acceptance of a loan modification at the price and interest rate of my approval. So they could say, so they could say, well look, here's an offer of a price and here's an offer of an interest rate, and you look at it and you go, that's not going to work. That's, that's, there you go. You could say, there you go. You know, there you go. But, not, but the other part is you already done a service to the owner. Mm -hmm. you, you, you got the them a loan and lower amount. Yeah. So yeah. it's a uh, win for him, yeah. win that, and then if it works out, it's one for you. Information is power. True. Mm -hmm. So, wow. so in that case, if that payment was acceptable to him after the notification, he could have said no. He could have backed said, away I, and said, thank you, thank Daddy. Thank you so much, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. He could have. And with the lease option, you're, if it's a two-year lease, let's say with option to buy, mm -hmm. when do you when do you deed the property? Right away? or at Whenever he decides. A lease no. option to buy refers to a time period of two years or before. So I can buy it for two years from the date of purchase or before. And you have to sign a separate agreement for that. Right? Correct. The contract and agreement. And if they back out, what's the consequence? He has the lease with option to buy. The key phrase here is option to buy. Meaning it's not a contracted demand, it's an option for an execution of a contract. I can decide to or not to without any ramification other than what I put in the paperwork. What if the owner backs on? What if the owner back out? There's nothing he really could do about the situation if the owner back out, other than filing a suit against the owner. So. And he's still getting a monthly income. Exactly. And I think the one way I thought it was to yeah. to do that is go to the court and put a. Um, go ahead. Start with a cloud, cloud. 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 You can you can you can cloud the title up. The only issue with clouding the title up is depending on the dollar amount of that lien you put on there, you may have to pay the recordation fee. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, Charles. You got to Charles and Holmes a little something? Right. Yeah, so if, if, if we don't know how to devise these contracts for a particular situation like this, is there is there a title company you would recommend? Yes, would very good title company, Cornerstone Properties, located in Silver Spring, Maryland. Very creative. The attorney is Brian Grumbly. He does all kinds of creative stuff. Land is um, um, trust, subject to's, and these type of transactions. Cornerstone with title. Cornerstone top properties located in Silver Spring, Maryland. You said Danny yeah. something? Brian. Brian Grumbly. Brian Grumbly. Yes. Now. Oh, wow. Ooh, I, like, I like to talk to him. Last time. Is that Yes. And this, Charles, this is the, 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 the listability? Yes. Listability is a quasi version of SRDS, but they have a lower amount of databases that they pull from. Okay. That's the difference. You don't have to pay the 499 or the four or the 899 You just call them the up. List. Yes, exactly. They'll send you over the list and stuff. And it's 
Listability. That's correct. Listability. One, more One word. The oh, one more quick question. When, when you ask the owner to uh, request a loan name, do you ask them to just specify the name that they want to or do you like to do that? When you when you request the owner for the loan modification, the bank decides that what the loan modification will be. The bank will look at the whole circumstance and say, well, we got all these properties in our portfolio. How much can we afford to lose? Well, how about 50%? Actually, I think they're just throwing it up against the air and, and grabbing 50% because there's no logic behind how much. Most, most 70% of all modifications are refused. Only 30% is accepted. So why did the bank say yes here? There's no logic behind it. He's just lucky. No, he's not lucky. He had me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what are the best targets? What are the best targets for CW? The focus. The focus. Is that the CW network? <laughs> <laughs> Is he trying to say I write chicken? No, I'm just saying. What is CW? Focus. Oh, focus. To focus. Oh, yeah. Everybody can see the best. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. What are the best, what are the best <laughs> targets to focus? Best targets to focus. Focus on it. Just, yeah. I like about six different look, six different targets. And we're going to go over those on one of, my, one of my slides. But the reason why I like these six different uh, marketing strategies is because Time after time, they've created the highest yield for my buck. Time after time after time, they've created the highest yield and profit for my deals. And I'll let you know exactly what it is after lunch. <laughs>